the image that you have on the screen right now is a picture that's grabbed from the VPN lab itself. In here, we're going to have two PFSense machines, one here and one here. We will also have two client machines, this one and this one. Inside our PFSense machine, we will be using DHCP to distribute an IP address to the client machines that are inside that network. For our purposes, we're, we are pretending that we have two different sites that are far away. If there are two different sites, it's logical that inside this network it's going to be its own private network. And this will have its own private network. Before we get going on setting up VPN, where we're connecting this side and this side so that this machine and this machine can talk to each other, we need to make sure that your PFSense machine is set up properly. Let's start with our first PFSense machine here. What I've done here is I've, I've laid out our machines logically so that it matches the picture. I have my client machine here. I've got the first virtual router PFSense here, which is going to be connecting to the second virtual router right here. And our second client machine, which is right here. So let's, let's talk about some of the settings that we need to have in our first virtual router. If we look at our picture, we can see that we have two interfaces, one facing our internal network and one that is facing outside of our network. Effectively, this interface is going to be our public IP address. Let's go back here. And then we have here. I've got two interfaces set up, our wide area network and our local area network. Let's look at their settings. When you create a virtual PFSense, ideally you should be setting up it in this order, with your WAN first and your LAN second. For our purposes in this lab, we have a host-only environment where we are going to be replicating a router connecting across the internet to a computer somewhere else on the internet. That means that they need to have right here is our internet, public IP address, public IP address. So in, in your computer, host only meets the need of the internet. The interface that's facing the client machine is on a LAN segment. And in your virtual environment, you're going to be setting up two different LANs. The one on the left side is going to be LAN 1. The one on the right side is going to be LAN 2. Let's take a look at our second PFSense machine. We are now looking at this PFSense machine. Notice that we have three interfaces. WAN, a LAN, and an OPT1. Let's put some names to the interfaces in our diagram. WAN, LAN1,
when len opt one. So we know that logically, the interface that it's going out to the internet is when. But inside your machine, it's going to have a different setting. Take a look at what we have here. When is our very first interface. The order that we see our interfaces here, one, two, three, are the same order that we see happening here. One, two, three. When is set to NAT. This allows this VM of PFSense to access the internet. It's through this interface where any clients connected to the LAN will be able to access websites and go to their email, etc. Our optional interface is the interface that will be facing the other side where this PFSense is going to be connecting. So this guy is set to NAT, he's LAN, and he is on host only, and this guy is on host only. These two being on the same network virtually will allow us to connect this interface and this interface. What I'm going to do first off is I'm going to show you the, the finished product so you know where we are heading. So as a review again, I've laid out my VMs in the same way that we have the picture. We got the left client over here connecting to the left PFSense machine, which is going to be VPN to the second v PFSense machine. And then we have a second client that's connected to this machine here. Currently we're on this machine. Let's take a look at what we have for an IP on this machine. If we come down here we can see that through DHCP set up in PFSense this client has been given the IP address of 192.168.1.10. Great. We go to this separate network, this client machine over here, let's take a look at the IP address. We can see that this machine is on a separate private network, 192.168.2.10. Now, both of these machines are connected to the PF, PFSense router, and there is VPN set up within it. When you have VPN site to site, created properly, the result that you want to see is this. I'm sending packets from 2.10 over VPN to machine in a different network. Let's go over to this other machine and take a look at that as well. Okay, without VPN, this wouldn't work. There we go. And since we have created a VPN, established a connection, we are able to connect. Okay. Our next step is we're going to look at some of the settings on each PFSense machine and look at how I've got it set up and uh, talk about some of the settings and why they are the way they are. Uh, 
one of the interesting things you have to remember about about VPN is that it's not just about the connection it's about the flow of data so inside of a router we have oftentimes default firewalls and in PFSense we have firewalls set up as well by default firewalls by default do one of two things they either allow everything or they deny everything and PFSense is one of the things that it denies is ICMP packets. So in my demo in a minute ago, we saw that I was able to ping. And now, even if I had a successful VPN established, I will not be able to ping between machines unless I explicitly allow ICMP packets through the firewall over the VPN connection. In this video, we are going to take a look at some of those settings to assist you. So let's go to our picture. We are going to be accessing this PFSense machine right here. I'm going to be accessing this machine through the web interface on this client. I know what its gateway is. We have its the credentials to log into that that router. And once we've logged in, we can see some of the interface. We can say the, the GUI of our router. We've got our interfaces, our WAN and our LAN. We've got other statistics that are happening inside our our machine for our purposes we care right now about setting up VPN so go to a VPN and we're going to be working with IPsec IP security so let's go over here now in your VPN lab there is a link that is very useful and if you follow it verbatim you will be able to set up a IPsec VPN tunnel. It's through NetGate Docs and it's called Routing Internet Traffic Through a Site to Site IPsec VPN. So when we create a VPN tunnel, we're effectively saying that we're going to be connecting one interface to another interface. And in our situation, it's this interface here across our, our fake internet all the way over to this network we are encrypting the traffic through TLS transport layer security from here to here so that traffic while it may be able to be sniffed it would be encrypted and we would not be able to decipher what is the data that is being transferred across the line this allows for a Calgary branch office to connect securely to an Edmonton branch or maybe it's a Calgary branch and it's Hong Kong okay we can connect over the internet with an encrypted channel or tunnel within PFSense we have we have IPsec tunnel and we have a something called phase one, phase two. Both sides of your PF senses need to have the settings matched up. Right now we have phase one and phase two. And if you want to think about it as this, phase one is building the bridge. It is the tunnel. It is the bridge by which we are going to travel across the internet to the other side okay phase two is how are we going to get across this bridge to the other side okay phase one is the bridge 
Phase two is how are we getting across the bridge? Okay, let's go in and talk about some of the things inside phase one. Within, within VPN, and specifically transport layer security, we want to handle our encryption, encryption algorithms. And we want to take care about how we handle our encryption and how the recipient is going to be handling the encryption. So we have this we have to set the proper protocols. So we have a key exchange version, IKE v1. The internet protocol we're using is is IPv4. The interface is WAN, and the remote gateway in our scenario and on my machines is is this. Let's pay a really close attention to this. Okay? Because this is how our data is going to be flowing out of this machine. Let's go back to our picture. Let's remember that interface is WAN and a remote gateway is 47.120. Okay. We are on this PFSense machine right now and the outward facing interface is our WAN. So we want this interface to connect with this interface. So when we're selecting phase one VPN and we're starting to build that bridge we may we need to select the proper interface now the remote gateway I have it set here as 47120 47120 actually refers to a very specific spot inside our hypothetical scenario. If we look at our picture, 47120 is going to be somewhere in here. Let's take a look at our machines. Notice that we have 47120 here and it's connected to our interface opt1. Let's go, go ahead and find the IP address for this machine's interface. Over in PFSense 1, our, our WAN, which is the one that we care about for the bridge, its outward facing IP address is 47130. Let's add that to our picture. There we go. So we know that this is the beginning of the bridge and this is the end of the bridge. They can communicate because they are over our, our fake internet that we've made. So think about the wording remote gateway. If we are starting the bridge at the WAN, the outward facing interface of PFSense 1, the doorway on the other end, the remote gateway, is going to be the IP address 47120 of the outward facing interface on the other end. This IP address is the remote gateway for this PFSense machine. Let's keep going. For some of these, you need to say, leave it as a default. Set yours to aggressive. 
your negotiation mode. The identifier. Uh, in older versions of PSNs, you could set it as an, an individual machine inside your network. You could do that through IP address on the newer version. But for our purposes, what we wanted to do is that the IP address of this machine is able to connect through the VPN to the other side. So it's saying that let's grab the IP address of what we have now, and that is okay. And the same thing on the other side. Now in your in your lectures, you will have learned about transport layer security, about asymmetric uh, encryption and symmetric encryption. In asymmetric, we have keys. I'm not going to be teaching you about how transport layer security works in this video. But what you need to know is that the key that you make on this side, uh, on this PFSense machine, has to be the exact same key on the PFSense machine on the other side. If they are not the same, nothing will work. Okay. Let's keep going. We're going to choose our encryption algorithm. We're going to use the advanced encryption standard. We're going to go to 256 bits. Choose a hash, SHA-256. And we're going to use two 1024 bits, the DH group. Make sure you remember these settings because it has to be the exact same side exact same on the other side. You can leave the default 28800 for the lifetime. Keep going. And the items in here you can leave as default. And once you save, you can apply. Okay, we need to take a look at the phase one on the other side. For our learning purposes, let's set up phase one on both sides correctly first, and then take care of phase two on both sides. So let's move over to machine, or PFSense machine two. We're going to connect via the web browser to our machine. Great. We've logged into our PFSense machine on the other side. Let's quickly, let's quickly review our map so that we know what we're, what we're talking about. I have now accessed this client machine, which is collected, connected via LAN segment on the 192.168.2 network. And I've connected to the web browser, and I am now accessing this machine through the web browser. Pay special attention that we have three interfaces working here. An interface here, our LAN segment. Interface here, our WAN, which in virtual machine is referred to as NAT. And our OPT1, which is our host-only network. Okay. There we go. Here we go. We can see our all our interfaces that are in here. We've got our our public facing interface that's going to be connecting to our PFSense one machine. We've got our WAN, which is our NAT, and then we have our our gateway to the rest of our network. 
that's internal on a private network. Let's go to VPN, IPsec. Ah, now take a look at what we have here. On the other machine, it was our WAN that was connecting. And on this side, it's our opt. So you've got to make sure that you're picking the right interface or otherwise it won't work. Similar situation we got here. We got our IPv4 internet protocol, IPv4, same key exchange version. Ah, 47.130. Let's take a look at our picture again. The remote gateway that this machine cares about is the interface, the outward facing interface on this side, 47.130. Okay. Similar settings, similar settings. The exact same pre shared key. Remember that we need to use the exact same encryption algorithm. And then we can use the defaults over here. Save it and apply. Great. Let's go and take a look at the phase two. So I, I paused and I bumped over to our first PFSense machine. So you have a, an idea of where we are. We are accessing this machine right now via the client. So we have now built the bridge. Phase one on both ends is correctly set up. However, traffic has no way of getting across that bridge. Let's open up our phase two. Okay. So some of the things that are inside phase two, our mode IPv4, our local network, which is going to be referring to the, the network that is in here, 1.0. The LAN subnet, we don't need to specify it because it's just going to say that it's everything that's inside the private network here. If we had separate networks, which is totally conceivable, you would have to specify it. Maybe you've got a department that has a special kind of permissions. HR needs to have their own private network. Uh, the executives need to have their own network. Then you can specify it. But for our purposes, we just want to have everything connected. You want to let your translation be none. The remote network. This is an interesting one. So this is referring to is the network that's happening on the other side. And you'll see that it's set as 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 with a mask of 0. And what's happening here is that this is telling PFSense to route everything over this interface. It's sort of like a PFSense's way of doing a catch-all. Right. Continuing on, we need to choose our, our encapsulation security protocol payload. And for our purposes, we're going to use ESP. Remember when we talk, when we're talking about, uh, algorithms, you need to have the same algorithm on both sides. We're going to use AES 256 bits, SHA 256. Notice that it's this, that in phase two, the encryption algorithm 
is the exact same as the encryption algorithm for the bridge. Same here. This is the default. You can leave that like that. And we're done. Apply the changes. Let's, let's jump over to the other PFSense machine. We are now accessing this PFSense machine. I'm already inside the machine here. Okay, with phase two inside our PFSense 2 machine, let's look at our information. We're, we're still dealing with IPv4. Our local network, though, is we're setting it as network, and we're going to be choosing the 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. And remember that 0 .0 0.0.0.0 is telling PFSense to route everything over this interface. We're effectively saying that on opt1, just bring it on over here to, onto this interface. This is the one that we want to use. Again, NAT is set to nothing. Our remote network. Now, if we think about our, our client machine on the other side, that client machine here is a 192.168.1.10. So our remote network is a 192.168.1.0 with a mask of 24. Keep on going down. Pay attention that the encryption algorithms are all the same. Leave this as the default, the lifetime. Save. Apply changes. In a moment here, we're going to go and look at the status of our VPN to see if it's connected. We've created a, a bridge between the two interfaces. Between here and here, we've created a bridge. We've set up encryption and a method by how traffic is going to travel from this side to this side. We've applied the changes. Now let's go look at our VPN status, status to see if it's working. To look at the status, all you need to do is go up to, in PFSense, go to your status, go down to IPsec, and it may have started automatically, but you may have to hit connect. And if you look, this one is, is connected. It's a good idea to do the exact same thing on the other side. So let's jump over to PFSense machine one. Go to our status, IPsec, and this, the connection is established. In my next video, we're going to talk about how to allow traffic through. Right now we have a connection and the VPN is working, but we will not be able to ping machines on the other side unless we allow it explicitly through the firewall.